I'm Major Ryan Hovater, Army historian with the 21st Theater Sustainment Command. When one thinks of sustainment operations in the Second World War, the Red Ball Express frequently comes to the forefront. The Red Ball Express was a truck convoy system that spanned over 500 kilometers through France, involving more than 25,000 soldiers over the course of 81 continuous days. This was an unprecedented effort, which began on August 25, 1944. Five days later, 132 truck companies, composed of nearly 6,000 troops, delivered 12,300 tons of supply. It was the Red Ball Express's highest tonnage delivered in a single day. The Red Ball Express wasn't in the original Allied plan to defeat Nazi Germany. General Dwight Eisenhower mortgaged the synchronized logistics plan in favor of rapid exploitation. He had to take the gamble, and his chief logistician, General John C.H. Lee, had to figure out how to keep the armies fueled, armed, and fed for as long as he could. If the logisticians could not keep up, the Allies faced the very real possibility that their maneuver forces would culminate and give the Germans time to regroup. To prepare for and sustain America's combat troops in the European theater, the Army established the Communication Zone, or COMZ, under Lee's command. The COMZ was similar to today's Theater Sustainment Command. Some of its key subordinate elements included the Advanced Section, known as ADSEC, which is like an Expeditionary Sustainment Command. The COMZ also had base sections, which were responsible for all the sustainment functions within a certain area, much like an area or regional support group. After the successful invasion of Normandy, beginning on June 6, the Allies struggled to advance beyond the initial lodgment. A determined German defense and a devastating storm slowed the Allies for weeks. Despite these difficulties, logisticians were able to sustain combat forces since the lines of communication were still very short. Things drastically changed at the end of July when the Allies achieved a breakthrough at St. Lo and General George Patton's 3rd Army exploited the breach. Soon, the Allied armies raced across Europe, stretching the supply lines beyond anyone's imagination. By early August, the combat troops were over 200 days ahead of schedule. Lee turned to his chief of motor transport division, Lieutenant Colonel Lauren Ayers, and tasked him to devise a plan to supply the armies by truck, since that was the only available option. The plan called for a closed loop, one-way route from St. Lo eastward across France called the Red Ball Express since all cargo, vehicles, and signage were painted with a red round disc. The two and a half ton cargo truck, affectionately known as the Deuce and a Half, became the main workhorse of the Red Ball Express. Their priority was fuel, the majority of which was carried in five gallon jerry cans. Oil, lubricants, ammunition, and food followed closely. Engineers worked round the clock to fix roads and build depots. Ordnance Corps troops established maintenance sites and drove wreckers to clear accidents. Signalmen ran telephone lines and medical teams manned aid stations along the route. The 783rd MP Battalion controlled traffic in urban areas and ensured that no other vehicles entered the route. Nobody had as much burden as the drivers themselves. The majority of the two-man driving teams came from the Motor Transport Service, 73% of which were African American. As the armies advanced, the distances became longer, and routes to Paris took as long as 53 hours. Convoys of 20 vehicles driving at 25 miles per hour hauled supplies eastbound and stopped for nothing. The overuse of trucks, combined with the inadequate, narrow and winding country roads, wore them down. Inoperable vehicles were moved to the side of the road where the drivers attempted to repair it themselves or wait for a maintenance team. And although the Germans were in retreat, they were a formidable and dangerous enemy. Luftwaffe aircraft found truck convoys to be a lucrative and easy target. Convoys were also subjected to artillery fire and direct attacks by infantry and tanks. By the end of September, round trips from as far as Cherbourg to the German border stretched to over 1,600 kilometers. Despite these challenges, the Red Ball Express delivered over 400,000 tons of supply, a rate of 5,000 a day before it ended on November 16, 1944. The efforts of the Red Ball Express kept the Allied armies moving and contributed greatly to the defeat of Nazi Germany. The spirit of the Red Ball Express lives on today in the esprit de corps of logisticians throughout the United States Army. And the legacy of the command responsible for that Herculean effort, the Comm Z, lives on in the 21st Theater Sustainment Command.